driving back from Yuma, Arizona, and I look up in the sky. It's kind of hard to tell. What is that? The Grand Canyon is like a masterpiece carved by nature's hand, but you know what's even more interesting than its breathtaking beauty? Well, the Grand Canyon is one of the mysterious places on our planet, harboring the secrets that nobody has been able to solve. From ancient civilizations of giants to the existence of Egyptian pyramids, this place harbors the mysteries that can change the understanding of the past. It was an era of giants. Giants, dinosaurs, and bears. Wow, that's just a bone, right? That is a bone. I mean, it... Recently, a drone camera captured in the Grand Canyon no one was supposed to see. You, get a, you can get a feel for the structure as well. It's very straight. That outcrop belt right there is very straight. Those, that's basically the Paleozoic contact. Stay tuned because what we are about to spill could flip your whole perception of this majestic wonder upside down. But before we dive headfirst into the mind-bending stuff, let's take a quick trip back in time. In 1908, President Roosevelt dropped the bombshell. The Grand Canyon was off limits. G. Kincaid was a man consumed by an obsession with the canyon. Crushed by the news of its impending closure, Kincaid refused to let despair take hold. Instead, he decided on one final hurrah, a daring boat ride down the mighty Colorado River. With dreams of striking it rich with precious metals like gold, silver, and copper, Kincaid charted his course. Little did he know, destiny had a far more electrifying adventure in store. After traveling about 40 miles downstream, Kincaid's keen eye caught sight of something peculiar, a mysterious mark staining the sedimentary behemoth, towering over 2,000 feet high. It was unlike anything he'd ever encountered in the area. Naturally, Kincaid's curiosity skyrocketed and propelled him into action. He anchored his boat and forged ahead on foot. As Kincaid tracked onward, he stumbled upon an extraordinary sight, a series of meticulously carved steps etched into the sandstone, ascending to a lofty ledge perched in the canyon's flank. What truly boggled the mind was the unmistakable man-made entrance awaiting atop those steps. Beyond that entrance was a hidden corridor adorned with ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. Yes, you heard that correctly. Right smack dab in the heart of the Grand Canyon. Kincaid was left dumbfounded. People had never inhabited this remote corner of the canyon, so how on earth did the hieroglyphics wind up here? And what secrets lay beyond this clandestine passage? Like any intrepid explorer worth their salt, Kincaid's curiosity burned brighter than ever compelling him to venture forth with a flashlight in hand as he crossed the threshold. A vast tunnel unfurled before him. With each step deeper into the passageway, Kincaid's disbelief mounted. Before his very eyes there were carvings, ancient artifacts and riches that had weathered the sands of time. It was as though he had been whisked away to a bygone era. The explorer found himself at the brink of an astounding revelation, an ancient passageway kept secret for centuries, holding within it untold mysteries begging to be uncovered. Even Joe Rogan couldn't resist discussing it on his podcast. Long before the Grand Canyon captured anyone's imagination, there existed a civilization thriving beneath its very depths. Kincaid's jaw dropped as he realized he had stumbled upon an entire subterranean city. The main thoroughfare stretched a whopping 12 feet wide, while some chambers boasted dimensions of up to 30 by 40 feet square. Yet it wasn't just the size that left Kincaid in awe. It was the engineering brilliance showed in the walls, measuring a staggering 3 feet and 6 inches thick. Kincaid found himself standing amidst a marvel of construction, a feat so incredible he couldn't begin to fathom its origins. As Kincaid delved deeper, he stumbled upon a series of granaries stocked with shells, some still brimming with seeds, alongside cooking quarters and a sprawling dining hall. But hold on to your hats because this underground marvel is about to blow your mind. Picture rooms spanning an impressive 30 by 40 feet square, their ceilings converging to a central point. And here's the interesting part. The walls, a whopping three feet and six inches thick, stood as a symbol of unparalleled craftsmanship. Each chamber had a treasure of artifacts, including copper tools, a technological marvel seemingly out of place in this era and region. Kincaid's mind reeled at the magnitude of his discovery. Recognizing its significance, he christened it the Citadel and wasted no time reaching out to the Smithsonian, seeking their backing. To his delight, the Smithsonian saw the value in his findings, and soon, Professor S.A. Jordan descended upon the site with a team of 40 scientists, researchers, and laborers, ready for a journey of excavation and exploration. As the exploration continued, it became evident that the cave system was meticulously crafted with a symmetrical layout. This wasn't just a haphazard arrangement of rooms and tunnels. It was a meticulously planned city, each component serving a specific purpose. The citadel had once teemed with life, 
housing thousands of inhabitants for hundreds, perhaps even thousands of years. But the burning questions remained. Who were these enigmatic people and what fate befell them? Brace yourselves because here's where things take a thrilling turn. This civilization was light years ahead of its time, boasting a level of sophistication far surpassing that of the indigenous tribes who had roamed the region for millennia. Now you might be tempted to chalk it up to a highly advanced local tribe, but hold your horses. The truth, my friends, is far more intriguing. Among the scientific community, theories ran rampant. Some speculated that this advanced society hailed from distant lands, perhaps Egypt or Asia. And the evidence? Well, it seems to align quite snugly with these hypotheses. The artifacts unearthed within the citadel painted a picture of sophistication far beyond the norm for the region, with traces hinting at a possible warrior stronghold. Kincaid and Professor Jordan wasted no time dispatching boxes of these remarkable finds and meticulous research notes to the hollowed halls of the Smithsonian Institute, hoping to bolster their hypothesis. Yet their thirst for knowledge remained unquenched. Eager to delve deeper into the mysteries of this ancient civilization, they once again reached out to the Smithsonian, pleading for additional resources in a bolstered team, confident that they were all on the same quest for truth. Their hopes soared. However, fate had other plans. Just as frustrations mounted over the lack of support, Kincaid and Jordan vanished without a trace, leaving a void in their wake. Their bewildered workers scattered to the winds, some meeting on timely ends while others simply disappeared into the ether, their lips sealed tight if anyone dared inquire about the sudden disappearances. But the plot thickened further. With the government swiftly stepping in to seal off the area from prying eyes, questions lingered. Why all the secrecy if there was nothing to hide? But that's just the tip of the iceberg in this cloak and dagger tale. The Grand Canyon holds sacred significance for Native American tribes dating back to time immemorial. Eleven distinct indigenous peoples, including the Havasupai, Hopi, Paiute, Navajo, and Zuni, have called the Grand Canyon and its surroundings home for countless generations. To these tribes, the Grand Canyon transcends its status as a mere national park. It's deeply intertwined with our creation narratives and spiritual beliefs. For the Havasupai, whose roots run deep within the canyon's embrace, it serves as a gateway to both the celestial and infernal realms. Their interpretation of heaven and hell diverges from the conventional Judeo-Christian conception. In the Havasupai worldview, heaven embodies eternal bliss and harmony, where individuals coexist harmoniously with each other and the natural world. Conversely, their concept of hell is a realm of profound anguish and retribution, a place where the unrighteous must confront their transgressions. According to Havasupai tradition, the journey of souls transcends mere mortal boundaries as they navigate through the canyon steps to their ultimate destination. For the tribe, the Grand Canyon represents more than a geographical marvel. It embodies a sacred nexus where past and present converge. Its majestic geological formations and breathtaking panoramas are not just scenery. They're integral to their spiritual heritage and cultural identity. This natural wonder didn't materialize overnight. Rather, it was sculpted over millions of years through the relentless forces of erosion and geological upheaval. The saga of the Grand Canyon traces back some five million years ago, when a primordial dam choked with sediment birthed a vast lake in what is now northern Arizona. As the waters receded, the mighty Colorado River, a force of nature in its own right, began its timeless dance, etching its indelible mark upon the landscape, forging the awe-inspiring canyon we marvel at today. The process referred to as erosion wields immense power. It is capable of sculpting some of the globe's most exquisite natural vistas. However, erosion stands alongside wind and water as integral players in crafting the intricate tapestry of canyons, gullies, and diverse features that characterize the Grand Canyon's breathtaking allure. Through the passage of time, nature's forces have conspired to shape a landscape of unparalleled magnificence and intricacy, a profound testament to the awesome might of the natural world. Traditionally, it's been understood that these geological marvels unfolded long before human presence graced the region, shaped solely by the hands of nature. But what if this narrative were to be challenged? Our understanding of humanity's emergence has long been anchored in solid ground, yet recent discoveries have rocked the very foundations of our historical timeline. Recent discoveries at White Sands National Park suggest that humans may have set foot in America far earlier than previously believed, sending shockwaves through the archaeological community. These findings indicate that humans could have inhabited the region as early as 23,000 years ago, a staggering revelation that challenges existing timelines by a whopping 10 millennia. This groundbreaking detail has the potential to rewrite the very narrative of human history as we know it. Some experts speculate that these ancient footprints may represent the earliest pioneers to venture into the new world, pushing back the boundaries of our understanding of human migration. While it's crucial to exercise caution before drawing definitive conclusions, this revelation ignites a fervent debate among scholars, injecting fresh vigor into the pursuit of unraveling our ancient past. 
One prominent researcher, Cyprian Ardeline, even goes as far as to dub this discovery the holy grail of anthropology and archaeology, which shows its profound significance and potential to reshape our perception of human evolution and migration. These footprints unearthed at White Sands National Park are a game changer. They're shaking up our understanding of early human presence in the Americas, pushing back the timeline farther than we ever imagined. But here's the kicker. The Grand Canyon might just have a billion-year-old backstory. Scientists recently delved into this epic saga using thermochronology, a nifty technique that traces the tale of heat and rock. And boy, did they unearth some mind-blowing revelations. First up, they gathered rock samples from various corners of the canyon. Then, they uncovered a jaw-dropping revelation. The western and eastern sections of the canyon might have danced to different geological beats over the eons. This could be tied to the breakup of a supercontinent called Rodinia, a split that kicked off a whopping 700 million years ago. As if that weren't enough, the researchers hypothesized that Rodinia's breakup could have left its mark in the Grand Canyon, sculpting what we now know as the Great Unconformity. This enigmatic gap in Earth's rock record has kept geologists scratching their heads for ages. It's scattered across the globe, but it's most glaringly obvious at the Grand Canyon's base, where 500 million-year-old Paleozoic Tapiot sandstone snugly blankets 1.4 to 1.8 billion-year-old Proterozoic Vishnu Schist. But fear not. The brainiacs at the University of Colorado Boulder have been burning the midnight oil to crack this geological riddle wide open. Enter a recent study published in the esteemed journal Geology, shedding light on this missing chapter in Earth's memoirs. According to their findings, the geological hiatus could be chalked up to a series of seismic tremors triggered during Rodinia's split. These quakes would have sent rocks and sediment hurtling to the ocean abyss, creating the conspicuous gap we gaze upon today. Lead author Barra Peak likened the Grand Canyon to a dusty old history textbook revealing the untold tales hidden away for billions of years. It's like peering through a window into the past, unlocking secrets long thought lost to the sands of time. Legends and rumors often harbor a nugget of truth scattered across the globe like breadcrumbs of ancient mysteries. Take, for instance, the tales of colossal skeletons unearthed throughout the western expanse of the United States. While they might sound like the stuff of sci-fi thrillers, whispers persist of their existence in the annals of history. Indeed, the Pueblo cultures of the region weave their own tapestries of otherworldly beings, adding layers of intrigue to the landscape. So, when archaeologists delved into the enigmatic mounds scattered across America's heartland, they unearthed something truly extraordinary. Nestled in the Oklahoma soil lay mounds unlike any seen in Europe at the time, boasting not only advanced architecture and artifacts, but also a revelation of skeletal remains that defied conventional understanding. Among the skeletal remains unearthed, Tales emerged of some towering as tall as seven or eight feet, casting shadows even in our modern era. Yet, just like the saga of the Grand Canyon, whispers abound of the Smithsonian's involvement in examining these colossal finds. However, when it comes to the Smithsonian encounters with the extraordinary, the plot thickens. While some assert that the giant skeletons indeed found their way to the Smithsonian's halls for further study, others argue there's nary a trace of such transactions in the archives. Rumors swirl of a deliberate suppression of evidence, leaving us to question, is the truth being shielded from view, or are we merely entangled in the web of myth? But hold on to your hats, because the intrigue doesn't stop there. In 1909, the Arizona Gazette dropped a bombshell that reverberated through the corridors of archaeology worldwide. According to the jaw-dropping article, there existed a tantalizing possibility. Egyptians may have traversed the Pacific Ocean to carve out a home within the labyrinth canyons of the Grand Canyon. The evidence supposedly unearthed suggested a mysterious cavern, potentially of Egyptian origin dating back to the era of Ramses. Now, this is in your run-of-the-mill headline, so it's no wonder the article set tongues wagging. The notion that ancient Egyptians may have embarked in a transoceanic odyssey to establish a foothold within one of Earth's most breathtaking marvels captivated the imagination of many. Yet, as swiftly as the theory took flight, it vanished into the ether, leaving folks scratching their heads in bewilderment. The sudden disappearance of the article only added fuel to the already blazing fire of uncertainty, weaving a tale as enigmatic as the underground city discovered centuries later. But hold on to your hats, because here's where the plot thickens even further. If there's one thing that could lay this mystery to rest, it's the bodies of those who once walked these hallowed grounds. And guess what? G.E. Kincaid stumbled upon a trove of mummies deep within the caverns, numerous and remarkably well-preserved, adorned with cloth, bark, and encircled by copper trinkets. With such compelling evidence in hand, it was clear that Kincaid had unearthed something of monumental significance. He wasted no time in dispatching his findings to the Smithsonian, where a team of experts undoubtedly poured over every last tread of evidence, piecing together the tantalizing puzzle of our ancient past. Initially, the Smithsonian appeared receptive to unraveling the mysteries shrouding the discovery. However, their tune soon changed, with claims surfacing that there were never any mummies to begin with. 
Faced with what seemed like a series of cover-ups, intrepid explorers took matters into their own hands to peel back the layers of deception. But sorry, in public relations, very speaking. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hello? 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 I'm here, I'm here. Sorry, I was on hold a long time. How can I help you? Um, they transferred me to Marion. Yes, this is Marion. Okay, great. Uh, my name is AJ, and I'm with The Y-Files. We're a YouTube channel that covers mysteries. Did you say you're from YouTube? The Y-Files is a channel on YouTube, yes. Okay. Okay, I wanted to talk to you about an article that was in the Phoenix, Arizona Gazette in 1909. Mm -hmm. And they sent me to you. I was hoping to ask you a couple of questions about that. Okay, let me stop you. No Egyptian artifacts of any kind have ever been found in North or South America. Sounds like you've given that speech before. Yes, I get this call a couple of times a year. I can tell you that the Smithsonian has never been involved in anything like this in the Grand Canyon or anywhere. So, G.E. Kincaid? <laughs> there is no record of anyone by that name ever working for the Smithsonian. The whole thing is a hoax. Yeah, that's the prevailing belief, but the Smithsonian has been accused of covering this up, so... Yeah, I don't have a response to that. You probably don't want to talk about giants or giant skeletons, huh? <laughs> Goodbye. Enter Jerry and Kathy Wills, who embarked on a quest in the late 90s to validate Kincaid's assertions and unearth proof of ancient Egyptian presence within the Grand Canyon's annals. For three years, they scoured the terrain, delving into exhaustive research and pursued the elusive entrance to the subterranean city. But, as fate would have it, their path was fraught with obstacles. The entrance lay a daunting 1,500 feet down the sheer canyon wall, a seemingly insurmountable obstacle. Undeterred, the whales pressed on, eventually stumbling upon a ventilation tunnel that held the promise of leading them to their destination. Yet, their hopes were dashed when they encountered cement barriers obstructing their passage alongside peculiar platforms equipped with mountaineering gear. Whispers circulated, hinting at government interference aimed at thwarting any attempts to penetrate the secrets guarded within the depths of the underground city. Naturally, the government vehemently denies any whispers of an underground metropolis lurking beneath the Grand Canyon's rugged facade, going so far as to impose a blanket ban on all attempts at exploration and mapping within the region. But try as they might to stem the tide of curiosity, intrepid souls continue to brave the odds in pursuit of truth. However, venturing to the forbidden territory is not walking in the park. The terrain teems with peril, its labyrinthine depths concealing treacherous chasms and narrow passages that spell danger at every turn. The government maintains they are simply safeguarding the public from these inherent risks, but suspicions linger like a shadow, hunting at a deeper agenda at play. Opinions remain divided down the middle, with some dismissing the tales of mummies and ancient Egyptians as mere fantasy, while others vehemently assert that a cover-up of epic proportions is underway. The scales tip precariously between belief and skepticism, with too many tantalizing clues pointing to an untold chapter of Grand Canyon lore intertwined with the legacy of the ancient Egyptians. Yet, the smoking gun, the irrefutable evidence that could lay this debate to rest, remains frustratingly out of reach, suppressed by the hands of those in power. The mysteries of Grand Canyon don't end here. Dating back to a period spanning from 6,500 BC to 580, the split twig figurines showcase cleverness of ancient dwellers who once traversed the vastness of the Grand Canyon. Despite their small size, these intricately crafted artifacts offer a window into the past, connecting us to the history woven into this majestic setting. Fashioned with meticulous care from twigs, these figurines speak volumes about the resourcefulness and artistic skill of their makers. Nestled amidst the awe-inspiring landscapes of the Grand Canyon National Park, these figurines beckon to adventurers and history buffs alike. While many are drawn to the park of springtime camping, it's the chance to uncover such fascinating relics that truly distinguishes the Grand Canyon as a treasure trove of exploration. Another discovery in the Grand Canyon has left researchers scratching their heads and sparked a frenzy of speculation among enthusiasts of the strange and unusual. In a remote corner of the canyon, hidden away from the well-trodden paths of tourists, a team of explorers stumbled upon a series of peculiar stone formations unlike anything seen before. These enigmatic structures, dubbed the Grand Canyon Stonehenge by intrigued onlookers, consists of a series of massive boulders arranged in a circular pattern reminiscent of the iconic stone circle in England. Standing proudly amidst the rugged terrain, these stones bear mysterious carvings and intricate patterns etched into their surfaces, hinting at a purpose or meaning lost to the sands of time. Initial assessments suggest that the Grand Canyon Stonehenge predates any known human civilization in the region, raising profound questions about its origins and the people who may have erected it. Archaeologists and geologists alike are baffled by the sheer scale and precision of the construction, leading to wild speculation about the possibility of ancient civilizations or even extraterrestrial involvement. Some theories propose that the Stonehenge-like formation served as a ceremonial site or astronomical observatory, allowing ancient inhabitants to track the movements of celestial bodies and mark significant events such as solstices and equinoxes. 
Others speculate that it may have served a more practical purpose, such as a marker for navigational or territorial boundaries. Adding to the mystery are the strange anomalies reported in the vicinity of the Grand Canyon Stonehenge. Visitors and researchers alike have reported unexplained electromagnetic disturbances, mysterious lights dancing across the night sky, and even encounters with strange creatures lurking in the shadows. While skeptics dismiss these accounts as mere folklore or exaggeration, others believe that they may hold the key to unraveling the secrets of this ancient site. As word of the discovery spreads, the Grand Canyon Stonehenge has become a magnet for adventurers, archaeologists, and conspiracy theorists alike, each eager to uncover the truth behind its existence. Expeditions are being organized to study the site in greater detail, utilizing advanced technology and interdisciplinary approaches to unlock its secrets. Despite the passage of millennia, the Grand Canyon continues to yield surprises and challenge our understanding of the world. Whether the Stonehenge-like formation is the work of ancient civilizations, otherworldly beings, or simply the product of natural forces remains to be seen. But one thing is certain, the discovery has reignited our fascination with the mysteries hidden within the depths of this iconic landscape. Do you think there's any truth to the findings? Let us know in the comments below.